Now he's saying he's God. Before he's saying we should think anyone who says he's God is dog. But there was one devotee who was a little advanced. He said, no. He said, we should see him on the same level of God. He's not saying he's God. He should be worshipped in that same way. Because when you worship the spiritual master that way, he takes your worship and gives it to Krishna. Because he's your connection with Krishna. You, have to, you, you can't jump over your spiritual master to Krishna. It's not possible. So therefore, he remains your, your most dear object of worship because it's by his mercy, yasya prasada, bhagavad prasada, yasya prasada, nagatikuta. It's by his mercy only that you can get the Lord's mercy. There's no other way. <laughs> Nagatikotopi means no other way. So when you honor, your, you can always honor your spiritual master anytime, any place, in any circumstances. That is considered to be proper Vaishnava uh, understanding, etiquette. Yes. Yes, yeah, continue, Shasha. Generally, if it's not your spiritual master, you no. Unless you have accepted that, that person as your shikshu guru, then, then it's also, because shiksha and diksha is the same thing. But generally, no. Better just to acknowledge his presence and go on with the worship. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, just acknowledge his presence like that. But you don't even have to do that. That's not even required. Because you're worshiping the Supreme Lord, and that's perfect like that. Yes, uh, Ananda? What's that? You develop a taste for chanting the holy name? What do you think? I don't see the I don't see the connection between Madhyamam and Namruchi. It's in the different levels of spiritual progress are more or less that when your taste starts to develop on the platform of Nishta and when you start practicing Trinata Peace and Ichena Tayori Vasahishna, when you start practicing that, then you start developing a taste. And then, and then, when that develops, you become fixed in your process of chanting. There's no correlation between madhyamam and taste that I know of any shastra. Do you know of anything? The, the correlation between the madhyam and yes. Uh, mm. Mm. Then, okay, then if Madhyamankari is on the level of Nishta, Nisha means one is fixed. But it's not the platform of Ruchi. Ruchi is where the taste is constant. Nishta um, is fixed in devotional service. He's not going to be deviated by material tendencies like that. He can still fall down, of course, but he's not deviated by material tendencies. So the question is, what level of chanting is he on? Is he beyond the offenseless stage into the clearing stage? Or is he beyond the clearing stage into the, uh, what is the, the offenseless stage? Or is he on the stage of Namruchi or chanting the pure name? <laughs> so there's different stages of chanting also. Like that. So I would say he's on the platform of clearing. He's getting rid of the offenses like that. Yeah. Yes, Johnny Kinath Prabhu. Could you stand up and so I could see you? Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah, it does mention that Kanisha can also become a guru, right? 
Yeah, there's also gurus on the Kanishta platform, but they can't do much. <laughs> if there's no Uttama available, there's no Madhyamam available, then you can take a guru on the Kanishta platform. <laughs> the thing is, you have to get a spiritual master. <laughs> but you can also help your spiritual master advance. Yes, but it, this, in this verse it says that, yeah. That's why you have to know the characteristics of an Uttama before you can recognize an Uttama. You have to study those characteristics. That's why before accepting a spiritual master, one should be able to evaluate that person you are going to accept. There's an evaluation period, not that you immediately accept someone. The evaluation is to see if that person is qualified to be your spiritual master. Hmm. Well, Krishna will, if you're looking for a spiritual master, Krishna will send you somebody. But he, he may send you a Madhyama Madhikari because Uttama Madhikari is just not available. Or he's not taking disciples. Gorky Shore does, excuse me, Gorky Shore does Babaji Maharaj. He didn't want to accept any disciples. Who else? Bamsi Dari Bath Babaji. Many, many great souls, you know, Saranga Thakur. Lord Chaitanya told him, you know, take disciples. He said, I'm not qualified to take disciples. Lord Chaitanya said, yes, you are. Take disciples. And uh, so, was it Saranga Thakur or Murari Chaitanya? Who, well, the next day he said, all right, Lord Chaitanya wants me to take disciples, then the first person I meet the next day, uh, I'll accept that person as my disciple. So he was bathing in the river, and while he was bathing, a dead body was floating in the river, and then he touched the dead body, and the dead body came alive, and then that person became his disciple. <laughs> It was a nine-year-old boy who had died from a snake bite, and his body was thrown in the river. And then, by touching this pure devotee, Saranga Thakur, that's how powerful he was. His, his, his life came back. His parents found out that their son, who had died of a snake bite, was now alive, and they asked him to come back home. He said, my real father is Saranga Thakur now. He has given me, the, he has given me not only physical life, but real life, spiritual life. So, yeah, so yeah, there's, um, but one has to seek out a Madhyamam, uh, an Uttama Madhikari. That's the injunction, that's from this verse we're reading here, verse number five. Prabhupada explains that in the purport. There, they come down to the Madhyamam platform. There's, there's those who come from, the, you know, the Kanista to the Madhyam, and then who's those who come from Madhi, uh, Uttama down to Madhyam for the sake of preaching. They want to assist the Lord in his mission to claim the soul of fallen souls. So out of compassion for the Lord's desire, they make that sacrifice. Preaching is a big headache. <laughs> I'm not, not complaining. <laughs> Because preaching is like trying to give somebody something that they don't want. <laughs> Most people don't want Krishna consciousness. What they want is they want God, but they want their material life too. So you have to tell them, hey, you know, it's not going to work. What they say, Maj, you're a fanatic. <laughs> So 
So preaching is like, you know, is trying to feed sugar cane to a person who has jaundice. <laughs> it's basically the thing. Sugar cane to a jaundice patient tastes very bitter. <laughs> and so Prabhupada said, you know, preaching is a very difficult task in Kali Yuga. You're telling people their life is not what they need. They need a new, different life. They're, you're actually interfering with their plans for material happiness. And that's a big offense. <laughs> so preaching is, we love to do it as a service to the Lord, but we also understand that it's very hard Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, Gorky Short, not Gor, I'm sorry, Gorgopal Maharaj, no, it was a Gorgovinda Maharaj would always repeat in his lectures, Prabhupada would say it over time, to make one devotee you have to shed 300 gallons of blood to make one person Krishna conscious. That's how hard it is. Because <laughs> people don't want it. They want sense gratification. That's what they want. So, in this age, it's very difficult to make a devotee. Very difficult. When we speak about devotee, one who is fixed in the process of Krishna consciousness. Whether they're grihasta or brahmachari, it doesn't matter, but one who makes Krishna their goal in life. That's a devotee. I want Krishna. That's it. We mentioned that. What do you want? Do you want Krishna or do you want what Krishna can give you? You have to ask yourself that question. Do you want what Krishna can give you? He can give you everything. Or do you want him? So then if you want Krishna, then you're a devotee. If you want his, if you want his energy, then you're a mixed devotee. <laughs> And mixed devotees don't really, you know, can't really stay fixed. They, they totter. They go up and down. And then eventually, if, unless they go up, they eventually go down. Like that. Yes, Prabhu. This is a Niskan thing, right? No, I don't think so. I think it's from the priests and charges. Well, I've heard one spiritual master in, my, in the movement says that they treat their disciples like birds, turtles, and fish. Yeah. Mm. Uh, do you remember the connection? I, I don't want to mention the spiritual master who said that, but it's he really, because I don't want to make his name public because he may not appreciate it. But he said it, and he wrote it beautifully. And he explained that, uh, how, uh, let's see, some disciples you have to give a lot of attention to. Some disciples you have to check in every once in a while. And others, you better leave them alone because if you bother them, they. they <laughs> so these are the three kinds of animals like that. You not leave them alone because they they're okay. They're making progress, and so you don't have to kind of like look after them all the time. It's nice if they check in every once in a while and let you know the, how they're doing like that. And others need that constant care, or else they can't make advancement. And others, you can check in every once in a while like that, and just so. And those three types of animals have these characteristics. I can't remember. Yeah, basically that's the point. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> All I know is.
All I know is I don't know everything. <laughs> so, when it comes to disciples, you know, um, you have to see if they're, you know, following the principles. Most important thing about disciples is they're chanting their holy names. That's the thing. If they're chanting the holy names and they're following the four regulative principles, that's fine. If they're doing service, that's even better. <laughs> like that. But at the least, they should be chanting 16 rounds and following the four regulative principles. Like that. If they're below that standard, then, then you need to see what you can do to bring them up. That becomes a responsibility. Because it says that if, if, the, if the disciple doesn't go back to Godhead, then the spiritual master has to come back in the next life to save that disciple. So Prabhupada's, when Prabhupada was asked that, he said, Prabhupada said, please don't make me come back. <laughs> please finish up in this life. If the disciple is still trying, but is below the standard, then the, the, the guru is duty-bound to save his disciple. If the disciple gives up on the spiritual master, then the responsibility is broken. Then, he has, then he's not responsible to come back and save that disciple. As long as the disciple is trying, but is in the fallen condition, then the spiritual master has to do whatever he can to save, to bring that disciple. Mm -hmm. That's his duty. Otherwise, don't accept disciples. Mm -hmm. It's not a business. <laughs> yeah, like that. So, different kinds of disciples. Beatrice? We mentioned that and by uh, engaging in the worship of the deity. And developing those qualities of deity worship, like that, and associating with advanced devotees. Yeah, someone who's more advanced. If they associate with other canistas, they, they won't go anywhere. <laughs> um, yes, if they only associate with canistas, yes. Let's see, uh, we got... Savitri again, and then you're next. Somebody is what? Duplicious. <laughs> Give up his duplicity. <laughs> Stop being duplicious. <laughs> and again, saintly association is the way to, you know, to overcome these inertas. If a person is around for a long time but hasn't ex accepted a spiritual master, uh, that may be something due to their previous karmas that doesn't allow them to actually make that next step. I've seen many people like that. There are many people who stay around our movement for years. I know what somebody who's 25 years around our movement. He'll come, we'll do some service, but that's all. No guru. Don't mention guru to them. They like Krishna, they may even chant the holy name, but spiritual master, no. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, sometimes it's something in their karma that causes them to not to have that kind of faith. I know one devotee, I will mention his name at Bhaktivedanta Manor. You know who I'm talking about. He's been around for so long. He's a wonderful devotee, but no spiritual master. And you just don't mention it to him either. Someday he'll accept a spiritual master, but when that someday will come, we don't know. It's something. Either 
they're looking for something beyond what they uh, are is available, or just like when Prabhupada left, <clears throat> a lot of devotees who came to a movement only wanted to accept spiritual masters that were had Indian bodies because they didn't trust anyone who has and was in the Western body. They're not advanced enough. But that's that's material. That's seeing in the material light. Mm. Mm. So yeah. So there's something in that person's karma that doesn't allow them to move forward. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they'll change like that. Yes, Prabhu. Kan Prakrita means Kanishta. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Materialist devotee. Sees everything in a material way. Yes, and Janaki Nath. Well, you can do that. You can accept someone within your heart that's disappeared, but at the same time, you still have to take formal initiation. Because without formal initiation, you're not connected to the parampara. So I know devotees in our movement whose spiritual master is, is departed, but they have, they are initiated by another spiritual master. They gave their, their heart to that person. That person left the planet. They didn't take initiation from them. So they accepted another spiritual master in order to practice devotional service. That's, that's okay. So the real spiritual master is the person who's departed. The one that's there, that they take an initiation one, is actually a replica or acting on behalf of their spiritual master. And that person should be worshipped in the same way, though. Like that. But that person who was acting as their spiritual master will not interfere with their loving relationship to that from that departed soul. In fact, he'll encourage that. <laughs> yeah. Real initiation is in the heart. The formal ceremony consummates what's in the heart. When you give your heart to a person who is qualified to give initiation, that is diksha. That's the real diksha. If the heart's not there and you take associate, you take initiation, you're really not initiated. <laughs> and uh, Prabhupada also, there was one uh, man, he came, he took initiation for Prabhupada, and the next day he left. And the devotee said, Prabhupada, he just took initiation and left. Prabhupada said he was never initiated. Because he really didn't give his heart. Therefore, the formal ceremony only consummates what's in the heart and makes you able to practice under the guidance. But if the heart is not surrendered to the spiritual master, initiation is just a word. Even if you have a name, you're not initiated. <laughs> it's what's in your heart, and that comes out in your activities. Uh, yes, you want to pursue that point some more? He, said, he says you have to drag him back. Tie him up and drag him. <laughs> so we were looking for some more rope. <laughs> Come on, Krishna wants you. No, Maya's more nicer. I like Maya. I'm, just give me another three lives. I'll be all right. <laughs> 
I just got to have some of that sense gratification. Maya says, you're my disciple. <laughs> yeah, I'm, okay, okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to understand this, Maya. Some gurus like Prabhupada have so good disciples. Right. Prabhupada says the spiritual master comes back, but it's not you won't recognize him in the same form. He'll he'll be your spiritual master, but he'll have a different external form. Like that. What was the example? I just had it, I lost it. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, thank you. Chintamani. Bilbamanda Thakur. When he was attached to this prostitute, Chintamani, there's a whole beautiful story how he came to see her in the middle of the night when there was a torrential rain. He crossed the river, a raging river in the rain. He climbed the wall to get into her house. He was all broken up, beaten, wet, just to come to see this prostitute. It was on the same day that his father died, too. He didn't even go to the ceremony. He was so attached to the prostitute. She looked at him. She was thinking, she said to him, if you had as enough attachment to Krishna than you have to this body of mine, your life would be successful. But he, she wasn't speaking. It was his guru from his last life who spoke through the prostitute. His guru was Somagiri. And he mentions that in his first prayers in the Krishna Karnamrita. Where he's, he glorifies Krishna, Chintamani, and Somagiri as three guides in his spiritual life like that. And then as soon as he heard Chintami, the prostitute, speak that, his whole attachment was broken right there. Boom. He lost all its atta attachment to Chintamani. He gave up thing, everything. He went on his way to, to Vrindavan. But then again, he got attached again on the way. <laughs> and that's another story. So. But eventually he made it to Vrindavan and uh, he wrote the beautiful prayer, Krishna Karnamrita, which is Lord Chaitanya saw Krishna Karnamrita and Brahma Samhita as the two greatest Vaishnava scriptures. Krishna Karnamrita simply glorifies Krishna and Vrindavan. Beautiful, beautiful poetry. It's recommended devotees read that. How many have read that? Krishna Karnamrita? Yeah. Maharashi read it also? Yeah, it's really wonderful. Modadam, 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 modadam. means honey. And Krishna's body is like honey. But sweeter yet is his transcendental face. But even sweeter yet is the smiling on his transcendental face. So it's honey, more honey, sweeter honey, 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 honey. <laughs> Until it's no longer interested in money, you're only interested in honey. <laughs> honey becomes the money and money becomes funny. <laughs> So that's what I do in my spare time anyway. <laughs> so the point is that, you know, the spiritual master will work through different energies. And you know, it, you know, this is a good point because one who sees his spiritual master in every situation is never lost. Prabhupada said, I see my spiritual master. He's He's teaching me, he's, re he's coming to me in different ways, through my disciples, through my worship. He's always with me. He's never not with me. So that's a type of vision that we have to practice, listening to the voice of your spiritual master through everything that you come in contact with. Then you're never outside of that contact. Like that. That's that's the mercy of Krishna. Yes, yes, Sri Devi. Yeah. 
that's minimum. minimum. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, there are periods when a devotee may falter, come down to 12 rounds, or break one or two regulated principles, then again pick back up again, then again falter. So what is the fate of such a disciple? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> uh, see what causes you to fall down, and then work on that. It's, an, it's, a, it's a very powerful anartha that's, as Bhutta Bhavana was saying, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to get the same results. <laughs> I don't want to fall in maya, but I don't want to change my activity. <laughs> I don't want to go to jail, but I still want to steal. <laughs> It's like saying the same, you know, I don't want to change, but still I don't like what I'm getting. <laughs> change! <laughs> so the question is, all right, I got to change, and then you, if you can't figure out how to change, then the association of devotees, the society of Krishna consciousness, provides that kind of help. Take shelter of someone who can help you. I need help. See, that's the point. Pride means I can do it. Pride means I can do it. And when I don't do it, you know, I can't do it. So we have to give up this idea that I can do it. We have to think that I have the means to make to be successful and it's in the association of devotees. It's by associating with devotees, hearing from devotees, serving devotees, getting advice from devotees. We'll talk about that in the fourth verse. The, the six loving exchanges between devotees. That'll be the class for Sunday feast. So, We need each other. <laughs> because if we don't associate with devotees, we will associate with the non-devotees. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Pick, if fall down, get up. Fall down, get up. But stop falling down. A child will keep falling down, but it'll keep trying until it successfully learns to walk. So Prabhupada said the walking propensity is in the child through the practice of walking. Our propensity for Krishna consciousness is there within our hearts. We just have to bring it out. We have to bring it out, that's all. It's there. <laughs> Everyone is naturally Krishna conscious. Your maya or your material life is an anartha. It's false. It's not you. You're not this body. This world is not your home. And all everything you have is simply an illusion. <laughs> it's, it's a fact. <laughs> Who are you? Jivair, Surupai, Krishna, and Nityadas. You are eternally servant of Krishna. And you belong with him in the spiritual world in loving transcendental. That's reality. This world is not real. It's simply a prison house for those who somehow or other escaped Krishna's, you know, spiritual life. We're here in this world and we're suffering. Even if we're not suffering physically or mentally, we're suffering in a greater way, and that is separation from our eternal lover, Krishna. That is the greatest form of suffering. To be separated for that person who loves you the most and whose love can fulfill you completely, that is the real suffering. <laughs> so even though you may not be suffering materially, everyone is suffering on that platform of separation from Krishna. And it says that through chanting of the holy names of the Lord, there's a certain stage that you reach through that chanting, it's called contrition. You know that word contrition? Contrition means I realize I am such, I'm so fallen, I left Krishna, what a fool I am. Tears come to your eyes, you feel so bad, I left that person who loves me the most, who is my eternal lover. And then the heart breaks and one feels totally lost and feels a sense of remorse. What a fool. And then, they, but that feeling and that experience inspires them 
in their devotional service, and then they make more advancement from that. It's a stage of ecstasy that comes by chanting the holy names like that. And that's mentioned by uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and Bhakti Vinod Thakur in the Shikshastakam prayers. Like that. Like that. Contrition, a sense of uh, guilt of leaving Krishna. So, yeah, we have to understand this world and for what it is. It's a place that we've been sent to because we left Krishna, that's all. We don't belong here. And most souls never leave Krishna. Only a small group or a small minority of souls go away from Krishna. And the majority of the living entities in existence never leave the spiritual world. We are in the minority. So, okay, so we, did, we made a mistake. <laughs> a big one. <laughs> And we're here. Now we have to get back. <laughs> so don't worry about the mistake. Worry about getting back. That's all. No. That's all. And Krishna, Prabhupada said, Krishna wants you to come back more than you want to come back. <laughs> Therefore, he sends his spiritual master just to show his mercy towards the conditioned souls. Therefore, that's why this says the spiritual master is the mercy manifestation of Krishna because he's bringing you, Krishna, and that's what Krishna wants, the you to come back to him, so he gives you his mercy through his representative like that. And that's the only business of the spiritual master, is to bring the soul back to Krishna, that's all, somehow. And so therefore we teach, chant the holy names of the Lord, hear about the pastimes of Krishna, make your life connected to Krishna somehow. Yena kena prakarena, Mana Krishna Nivesaya. Somehow or other, somehow or other, somehow or other, remember Krishna. <laughs> somehow. That's the verse from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, yeah? yeah? Somehow or other, connect to Krishna. You, you know, you're walking out the door and somebody pushes the door on your foot and your foot goes, and you go out. Oh, Krishna! Wow, I remembered Krishna. Yeah. <laughs> of course, that's the painful way. <laughs> but that's what you needed. <laughs> Somehow to remember Krishna. Because remembrance of Krishna is perfection. Forgetful for, for, of Krishna is imperfection. Like that. The soul cannot forget Krishna. The mind interferes with the soul's activity and makes us look towards the material for satisfaction. Therefore, the mind needs to be adjusted. And that's what nectar instruction is. It starts off, as Buddha Bhavana Prabhu talks about, the first one is mind and sense control. The second then is the proper attitude, like that. So we'll hear some more. Tomorrow morning, Buddha Bhavana Prabhu will do verse number six, which are dealings with devotees in the don't way. I just dealt with dealings in devotees and how to do it, and he'll deal with the devotees in the don't way. It's a very, very interesting verse. So please come for uh, 8 o'clock class tomorrow. So I don't want to keep you any later. It's 9.30. I can continue, but I think he will interfere with uh, uh, Nidra Davies' program. <laughs> Everyone needs to take rest so they can be fresh tomorrow. And I think there's some prashadam. So we'll stop here. I'd love to continue, but it's 9.30. And samsara dhavan Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Harinam Sankirtan ki Krishna Prashad ki, Harinam Sankirtan ki, Nectar of Instructions ki.